If you haven't been to the El Paso Museum of Art in a while, you're definitely missing out on some unique activities and exhibits. Hello, I'm your host, Ricky Saias. We're here at the El Paso Museum of Art. Behind me, there is an actual mural being painted inside the lobby and is being created by a local artist. The idea to put a mural in the entrance came from the folks at the Museum of Art, making it the first mural to appear in the lobby of the museum. Staff carefully chose El Paso native Mariana Olague to come up with a design and paint it on the wall. Olague has until the end of the month to finish the mural that pays homage to the Ruben Salazar apartments in South El Paso. I wanted to kind of be a snapshot of all our neighborhoods kind of smushed into one where you can see, hey, that looks like my tío, that looks like my little cousin. That's what I want you to get a sense of when you, when you come up to the, to the mural, like family. If you stop by, you can also talk to the artist while she works. The mural has been installed on days that the museum is open. That's Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. An official unveiling of that mural is scheduled on Saturday, February 3rd, and will include music, soft drinks, and pan dulce. While you're at the El Paso Museum of Art, you need to see the Border Biennial exhibit on the second floor. It's amazing to say the least. The art installations, pictures, and captivating displays focus on the unique identity of the border. About 50 artists from the area and along other parts of the border showcase what the border represents in this exhibit. The Border Biennial is also taking place at the Museum of Art in Juarez. The exhibit is a must-see, but hurry because it's only around for a few more weeks. Well, here's some news you can use regarding the city's two museums downtown. Starting Sunday, January 21st, the El Paso Museum of Art and the El Paso Museum of History will be open on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The additional day will now give visitors a chance to check out both museums on Sunday. Turning to other happenings now, the city of El Paso has federal transportation funds that are now being used to hopefully reduce traffic fatalities in our community. A total of $9.9 .9 million are being invested on Yarbrough in East El Paso. Data shows that Yarbrough is ranked as the second street corridor in the city with the highest number of accidents that involve cyclists and pedestrians. Within the city limits, Yarbrough is also one of the top 10 streets for deadly accidents or crashes that results in serious injuries. The funds are expected to help reduce speeds and improve signage in the area. The project is part of El Paso's Vision Zero and Safe Routes to School program. El Paso is one of 48 communities to receive the Safe Streets and Roads for All grant. Speaking of traffic, you might think that driving fast only causes car accidents. Well, guess again. El Paso Police says driving too slow below the speed limit can also cause crashes. This month, officers are keeping an eye on traffic looking for slow drivers. They're reminding drivers to follow the law. Don't drive too slow that you block the flow of traffic. You can't drive so slow that you're impeding traffic um, and because that, that is a risk. It's just as dangerous to drive slow as it is driving fast. Another reminder from police, don't text and drive and always keep your eyes on the road. The police department is looking for men and women to join the police force. Applications for police trainee are now open. Joining the police department has its benefits. Aside from serving our community and keeping it safe, the department offers a competitive salary, health insurance, tuition assistance, a pension, and much more. To apply or for more information, visit joineppd.com. Now, if you don't want to join the force, but want to learn more about the El Paso Police Department, then why not join the Citizens Police Academy? It begins January 13th. The Academy shows how the department functions, from crime scene investigations to active shooter scenarios and more. Many times individuals may have questions, want to learn a little bit more about their police department and have never had an opportunity or have maybe found the right time to be able to get involved or learn a little bit more. So this is that opportunity for the community. The Texas Department of Public Safety is also part of the Academy. To apply, visit EPPD.org and click on the Community Policing tab. All right, that's going to do it for us on this edition of Your City in 5. If you get a chance, come on out here to the El Paso Museum of Art. Check out the mural on the first floor in the lobby and the biennial exhibit here on the second floor. For Mario Ramirez, who's behind the camera, I'm Ricky Saias. Stay safe and please be good to each other. We'll see you next time on Your City in 5.